The year is 2017. You just walked out of Star Wars The Last Jedi, and there's one scene that you just can't block out of your mind. No, no, not, not that one. No, not, no, not that one. This one. Ugh, it's just, it's just like, wh why? I mean, what the, what is going on? The CGI doesn't even look that good. What is she doing? She's in the forest. The cuss is going on. It's done. This part is dumb. It's not good. Today I want to talk about spoken rules and unspoken rules in movies. Because movies, just like real life, have rules. And sorry to all the rule breakers out there, but um, everything has rules. So let's define these two categories with some good old life examples. Unspoken rules are the ways of life that don't need to waste time being defined even though that's what I'm doing right now, I'm defining them. Unspoken rules can range anywhere from the laws of physics, which our universe abides by, to never using a urinal right next to another guy, or putting boots on before going out in the snow. They're fundamental things that don't really need reminding. Many unspoken rules are only ever spoken really early in life, like common courtesy and manners. Ways of life that were taught so young and are so normal now that they really don't need to be said again. Spoken rules are a lot easier to point out. These are the instruction manuals for board games, these are uh, recipes and the tutorials in video games, which I'll come back to later. Spoken rules need to be stated in order for common understanding. If you were watching football for the first time in your life, yeah, it might still be kind of entertaining to watch, but it'd definitely be a better experience if you knew why the players did the things they did. And that's obviously because you just don't know the spoken rules. Missing out on spoken rules removes part of an experience, and also leaves a lot of room for errors. If you've ever played any type of game with people in which there are different ways of scoring or certain rules that are commonly left out, it can be a mess trying to decide what's going to fly as the spoken rules and the unspoken rules. If spoken rules exist, they are vital. Now I know what you're thinking. Hey Chris! Thought you were making a new video about new Netflix Black Mirror Bandersnatch. Why are you talk about boring rules? Don't worry, you poor sinus infected chap. I'm gonna slap it right on. I'm gonna get right to it. I'm get, I'm getting there. Don't don't even don't even shed a single tear, you sweet baby boy. Now we're getting into movies, or more specifically, how genres distinctively utilize spoken and unspoken rules. Animated animal movies are instantly given the unspoken rule of animals can talk. No one is surprised by talking animals or toys or even cars in a Pixar movie. That's an unspoken rule. And only in some cases does this become a spoken rule. In Ratatouille, Remy can understand and communicate with humans, but he can't vocally talk to them. Because this is more of a specific rule, it should also be a spoken rule in the film. And it is. Did you not? You understand me? I can't cook, but you can, right? Look, don't be so modest, you're a rat for Pete's sake. Whereas the Bee movie features bees that can vocally communicate with humans. Mama, Dada, honey, you pick it up. So on occasion, there is need for spoken rules in these types of movies, but for the most part, they don't have many spoken rules because it can mostly be implied by the audience that we're watching something fictitious where animals are extremely smart and social and s surfers. But some genres require a lot more spoken rules. Star Wars has a lot of spoken rules, the Force being one of them. Now, obviously, over time, rules like the Force become unspoken because everybody understands them, but they are still spoken and defined in these movies all the time. In fact, like, way too much, actually. Be mindful of the living force. The force will guide us. I sense a disturbance in the force. I feel it also, Mother. The will of the force. The ability to use the force is diminished. The force is with us. He could use the force to influence the midi-chlorians. The subtleties of the force. You must embrace a larger view of the force. He knows the ways of the force. The force. The force. Bring balance to the force! The netherworld of the force. The force can have a strong influence on the weak-minded. Use the force. The force. That's not how the Force works. Star Wars, especially in its current state, is a prime example of why spoken rules need to be stated early on. When you begin to bend the spoken rules, or add on to them, or just blast them out the cussing window, viewers can get upset. 
Revealing new spoken rules too late is not a great way to treat your fans. Hence why, even if you liked the movie, this scene is just bad. Sci-fi and fantasy movies particularly need spoken rules because the viewer is entering into a whole new universe in a way, and that requires some type of introduction. This is also why most spoken rules in films are given in the exposition. Just like the tutorial of a video game, it sets the stage and lets the viewer know how things operate in this world. This technique can be done well, It began with the forging of the great rings. Or not so well at all. Oh my eyes. Most fiction genres have a lot of freedom and almost an endless amount of spoken rules at their disposal. That's how good world building happens. However, there is a specific genre which doesn't need to lean so heavily on spoken rules. Take psychological thrillers, for example, movies like Shutter Island or Memento. These movies can purposely leave out some of the spoken rules to confuse, but also reel in the audience. Psychological movies have the freedom to create tons of unspoken rules, and if done right, when these rules later become spoken, they make for some of the best, most memorable plot twists ever. But I'm not going to show any of those here in case you haven't seen The End of Shutter Island. Some movies just have too many spoken rules in my opinion, Donnie Darko. Now don't get me wrong, I like this movie, but I'm not as crazy about it as the rest of its cult following. Like seriously, why, why are people obsessed over this film? Donnie Darko has too many rules. It's sci-fi, so it needs spoken rules, like we mentioned earlier, but I just really don't want to spend two hours watching Donnie Darko explained videos and researching time travel and the rules that the film abides by and all the terms they make up and throw at you. I, I just don't want that level of spoken rules in any film. It becomes convoluted. Which brings us, finally, to Bandersnatch. Bandersnatch is pretty unique, and I'd be lying if I said that I didn't enjoy making decisions for Stefan. A lot of work went into this, and it shows. But it's still just meh in the end. The choose-your-own-adventure genre doesn't really have as many spoken or unspoken rules since there are different paths you can take. Bandersnatch in particular features many endings that are just so out there and crazy that they definitely just became self-aware of how ridiculous the whole concept comes across. Choose-your-own-adventure is a cool concept, don't get me wrong, but when you have multiple endings and we as the viewers are aware of that from the get-go, it starts to lose its meaning. And when you start entering into meta within a genre, things get even more meaningless. Bandersnatch becomes way too meta towards the end, even including an ending where the viewer reveals to Stefan that we are Netflix, and we're watching from the future. And it's just like, oh, okay, I, I guess, that's, that's cool, you, you, can, you can fight your dad now, whoa. If you've seen all the endings to Bandersnatch, you know as well as I do that there aren't really any rules. They all end up being abandoned in the end or are just so convoluted that it just doesn't really matter. That's honestly one of the only spoken rules in Bandersnatch. Colin says it himself, that there are multiple timelines and essentially nothing really matters because you can just try again in the next one. So why should I care at all about the characters or anything that happens to them? They even give you the option to go back and find other endings once you reach the end. And honestly, the only reason I went back to find more was out of curiosity, not because I was invested, impressed, or wishing there was more, more, more. It was like a, an experiment, like poking and prodding an animal just to see what it does. And that's all due to inconsistent rules. In the moment, it's pretty interesting, but it doesn't really leave any lasting impressions other than, I'm gonna go look up the rest of the endings now. If that's what the experience is about, then I'll pass. Spoken rules open the door to the viewer and help them get acquainted with what they're about to experience. They matter, and they need to be conveyed appropriately in order to hit home. But if the rules don't matter, neither does the game. And if the game doesn't matter, neither does the player.